Uh, let's bring in Brian Belsky, the Chief Investment Strategist at BMO Capital Markets. And Brian, I mean, help us make sense just exactly what the market is the most focused on right now, because we've been talking about coronavirus. We've been talking about this rollback in regulations, talking about the election here leading up to uh, November. We're just, what, less than five months away from the election. How should we be viewing the recent market action and just where we stand right now? Shauna, thanks for having us. I'm, I'm excessively humbled by the professor moniker. Yeah, professor. <laughs> uh, <laughs> peace. Um, so Andy and I go way back. So by the way, uh, in the, in the pre-bumper music, the movie was American Gigolo. So I am old enough to remember that. So thank you very much. I actually watched it on HBO uh, back in the day when HBO was a really big deal to have HBO uh, at your house. But anyway, I digress. So on the narrative on Wall Street, we've been inundated with kind of three primary questions. First of all, uh, number one, uh, what's going on with uh, the virus and why isn't the market down more? Number two, what's this notion with respect to growth versus value? And then number three, uh, the Biden versus Trump trade. And so I'll kind of go in reverse order because I'm Polish and I'll say, you know, uh, I think it's way too early to be building portfolios for either candidate right now because look at how much things have changed over the last three weeks versus the last six weeks. We haven't even gone through the conventions or the debates and things like that. And I think too many people are banking on a Biden victory. Now, Andy's right. The, the narrative on Wall Street is really surrounding and encompassing a Biden victory. But I wouldn't necessarily think most people think it's a negative thing. I just think they've already decided that Biden's going to be the victor. In terms of the growth versus value thing, today was a very good example where our, our advice is Look at the fundamentals, right? When growth is scarce, growth outperforms. And so that's why tech in particular continues to go up. And you focus on those areas in COVID, or I'm sorry, pre-COVID that we're leading, during COVID and after COVID, there's some very clear themes. But don't take your eye off the ball with respect to financials. And we are, even though we're neutral financials in our portfolios, we are overweight money center banks and brokers and have been for a while. So a day like today is a great day for us, but it's because of fundamentals. You want to buy those banks in, in the financial sector that have scalable opportunities because of low interest rates, it's harder for the original banks to make money on such very tight net interest margins. And then finally, with respect to uh, the, the resurgence in COVID, and there's many people, believe it or not, are thinking that the second wave is happening right now. I mean, I think that's a little premature, number one. Number two, I think we as the investment world got way too deep into the weeds with respect to COVID in February, March, trying to figure it out all out ourselves. And I, you know, my advice would be this, control what you can control and, and continue to manage your portfolios accordingly. Stop trying to forecast the curve and things like that. Let the professionals do that. Do your job and do your portfolio job. And that's what, what our advice would be. So again, way too early to be jumping to conclusions with respect to the second wave. So then, Brian, so then how are you positioning your portfolio right now? It's too early to do it for the 2020 election. There's so much uncertainty out there. We need to, I guess, take a longer term, uh, longer time horizon. So if people want to put money to work right now, what are you, what's your advice? Well, we would say this for the professional money manager, a big job. There's a big job coming up in terms of rebalancing portfolio, Shauna, because the second quarter was a huge quarter. And if you rebalance your portfolio at the end of this quarter, your your weights are going to be off. And so you're going to have to, quote unquote, kind of rejigger some of your uh, of your weighting. So, for instance, technology and consumer discretionary, you've had to kind of you're going to have to increase your weighting there, not only because of what Apple per se and Amazon say, but there's several different areas that have actually done very well. So we are officially overweight communication services, technology, consumer discretionary and parts of the REIT sector. And again, as I said, we are overweight money center banks uh, in the brokers. So I think you should be building those portfolios, Shana, in both growth and value. And again, this is a stock pickers market. I don't think you'd be doing your portfolio a great service by buying ETFs here. You want to have a mixture of what we used to call in the old days a core portfolio, kind of a GARPY type growth at a reasonable price portfolio with that is overlaid with the strongest brands and the strongest themes right now, because we believe themes from a cyclical and secular basis are the way to invest longer term. Hey, Brian. Gosh, I remember GARP too. Um, people don't say that so much anymore. Um, I wanted to ask you about income and yield because, you know, I, gosh, I'm looking at dividend yields and I, I, I love to see that. But then I'm wondering if that makes sense right now, according to your thinking. 
Well, I'll tell you, dividend growth product, Andy, it's been a hard year for dividend growth product. And in the major- and because of that, the majority of the dividend growth kind of sector, our financials and financials just got walloped in the first quarter. And they're just in the early stages of coming back. Now, these stocks, from a, from a longer-term perspective, because of what happened in TARP, uh, they were n- unable to pay dividends for a while. So now they're cranking up the dividends kind of back up to historical norms. And I think much was t- too much was made in February, March of companies suspending and, and, and cutting their dividend. It only, it only affects 2% of the market. And so I think when you take a look at kind of just fundamentals, uh, the financial sector in the United States is the strongest dividend growth sector in the world, in the world. And so in a world that we have 0% uh, interest rates and 0% income out of bonds, we think equity income makes a lot of sense. So U.S. financials are part of that. Technology is part of that. Healthcare is part of it. There, there's, some, uh, there's some also industrial companies that are showing strong dividend growth. Aaron, real quick, I just want to get your take on the data that we got out this morning because we haven't talked about the additional one and a half million people filing for jobless claims. We still have around 30 million Americans unemployed. How is the investment community... What, what is your read, I guess, on the labor market and how worried should we be at this point just in terms of the fact that we could see a delay in some of these real efforts? Yeah, it's an excellent question. And I think it harkens back to what we were warning people in, in March and April that these initial forecasts were way too negative. And we've started to see that second derivative, less negative move with respect to not only uh, economic variables, but clearly things like the uh, employment. Now, remember, employment's a lagging indicator. But the key thing, I think the key statistic that came out of today that continuing claims dropped below 20 million. And I think we're not talking enough about that. And clearly, I really want to see the June uh, data in terms of our July data for uh, for June, I'm sorry, the employment report to see if it kind of follows through what we saw in May. I think it just speaks to this notion that people are starting to feel better. We're slowly coming back. And I think, I think we're also too incensed with respect to the economy and trying to depict whether or not it's a, it's a shovel or a saucer or a V or a hockey stick. I think what we have to understand is after the financial crisis was the slowest, uh, grindiest economic recovery in post-war history. I mean, it, we've never seen this before. And I think we're going to have another slow one. That does not mean the stock market can't continue to go up. It just means it's going to take a while for all the economic engines to get going. All right, Brian Belsky, always great to have you on the show of BMO Capital Markets. Uh, We look forward to having you back again soon. Thanks so much. Thanks for having us. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.